What's up, YouTube? My name's Cody, and this is my wife's 92 Bronco. And those down there are electric hubs. And we're putting new brake rotors on this old beast today. And uh, there's not many videos on disassembling these electric hubs. Plenty of videos on manual hubs, but uh, not that many on electric. It really took me some time to find some videos on it, so I figured I'd make a little video myself of disassembly and uh, any tips and tricks I learned while doing this and throwing it up on the old interweb to help you guys out. So anyways, I'm going to jump into it, get this camera turned around. Thanks for watching. I uh, got plenty of other old Ford videos and tons of other stuff. So after this one, go check the other stuff out. Help a brother out. Subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. So anyways, let's jump into it. All right. These are your magical electric hubs right here. Or as Ford calls them automatic hubs. Uh, a lot of people call them push button hubs. Whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna call them, that's up to you. Um, as you can see, I already put a new caliper on here and we got some new pads. I didn't have a new rotor at the time, so I'm having to kind of go backwards and disassemble and put a new rotor on there. But uh I wanted it to all be, you know, nice and brand new. And uh, in my last video, we did some steering work, new power steering pump and power steering box. And we're just kind of going through the front suspension of this thing and bringing her, bringing her back to life. But uh, there's going to be five bolts right here on the end of your uh, cap right here that's keeping all this stuff inside. It is going to be a, a Torx see t25 that little guy right there i already busted these loose just to save some camera time but uh as you can see this little spring sits in there and uh it you know this is a good idea, even if you're not a YouTube person or whatever. If you're dis disassembling something and, you know, you're not really sure how it goes back together or you're scared to put it back together or, you know, you, maybe you've done it a hundred times and you just didn't see something fall out and you go to put it back together and it ain't working. If you got a camera rolling like this filming you, you can see exactly what you did. And if you got any questions, you can just go back to your film and uh, you know, see what's going on. But I'm gonna take this stuff off. Let's see. This will come off the end of here, but I'm gonna take this stuff off of here slowly and uh, keep an eye on what I'm doing. And we'll uh, learn this together. All right, after you pull that assembly out, there's gonna be a little snap ring on this shaft right here. I already got it pried off a little bit. But this is one of the things uh, in the other videos I watched, it was hard to see. They never really got a good angle or good lighting. And uh, anyways, it was hard to see what the snap ring looked like, but all you need is one or two picks, I was able to pop it off with just one. But if it's difficult, you can get two picks in there. But just pop it out. And that's it right there. Uh, I guess it's really more of like a C-clip almost, more than a snap ring. But anyways, let's see. We can get this out of there. There we go. What's next is that uh, 
four slotted nut. They actually make a special tool for those. I'm gonna go the old school route and elect a hammer and a screwdriver. Let's see if we can't get her backed off of there. Anyways, let me shut this camera off and you uh, know get this off of there and show y'all how that goes. All right, well that was easier than expected. Like I said, you can buy the tool. It's about uh, 15 to $20 reader, depending on where you're buying it from. But there is not much torque on this one. Uh, I would say maybe in the f between five and 15 foot pounds. Look in your manual if you want to be specific, but it barely, it took a very small tap with the hammer and this busted right loose. But you can just stick a screwdriver right on the edge of one of those. And Buster, if you want to do it the redneck way, or go buy you that tool. If you're going to do a bunch of these, probably worth just go ahead and buying the tool. I'm just going to back this off. Alrighty. So, that is going to be your, all those little holes in there are for indexing. That way this goes in just the way it's supposed to. This one is flat on both sides. But if I uh, am correct, I believe the nut behind this actually has a little uh, nub on it for indexing. see right up here at the top it's got a little protrusion on it and right at the top of the there let's see if I can point to that for you guys right up in here there's a square slot that square slot right here will slide into an in index on I think uh, next step is just backing that nut off. Hopefully that one's not tight either. All right, well this nut came off super easy. Uh, it was even easier than the other one to, actually I just, once I turned the camera off, just literally gripped that on it real tight and it started twisting off. I didn't have to use a screwdriver. So I already unscrewed it. Pop, pull it out of here. But on this one, if you can see, get a focus. There's a little uh, tit right there, protrusion, whatever you want to call it. And that is what indexes into that other piece and uh, keeps everything from coming loose and keeps it where it's supposed to stay. But pretty sure now. This hub will slide off of here. I uh, also I had the camera off. I uh, pulled my caliper off. Uh, there we go. All right. Well, we're gonna separate this caliper first, and then I'll uh, show you guys a breakdown of everything we pulled out of there. I'm just using a uh, pointed chisel. Safe way to do this is to hydraulically, hydraulically press them out. Uh, even safer way is to put a nut on the end of here, put a board on top of that nut, and then smack them. That way you don't risk uh, messing, messing your threads up. But I'm gonna use this, uh, the point on here and on the end of my studs is actually a little dimple that this point fits perfectly in. And I've knocked all of the other five out without uh, messing the threads up at all. And it, it barely even put a mark in the end of my studs. 
So this works pretty good. So all you do is just take it, get you a nice five pound sledgehammer or even bigger and give her a couple of wax. We'll shoot straight down through. There you go. Uh, smart thing would be to buy brand new uh, wheel studs and press into your new rotor. But uh, I can feel these still have a lot of, uh, I don't know what you call that, but coarseness to them. So they'll swedge into the new rotor just fine and uh, stay in there. But anyways. That rotor should come apart from that uh, hub now. Just got to give it a few wax and they should separate. So let's see. helpers so she's gonna get to learn about what's in a 92 Bronco 4x4 wheel hub that is your uh, nut that has no nipple on it that is your nut with a nipple that's the one that goes on the back as you can see those index onto that little nut or that little nipple that's uh basically a washer that's that c-clip your front bearing and let's see if i can get a good view of that part number for you in case any of you guys are wondering lm5 Zero one three four niner, as old Chris Farley would say, and that's your cap with screws in it. What is that? And this is your, I guess this would be called the locking assembly. I'm not even going to attempt to pull that apart, <laughs> and I would suggest you don't either. But we got our New beautiful rotor off Amazon for 35 bucks. And this old one is trash. Hat. It has so many grooves. Uh, I mean, probably only, I'd say 30, 40% of the pads actually coming in contact with the rotor, if that. So uh, these new rotors and new pads are gonna make a world of difference when it comes to stopping power and then obviously there's your hub your rear seal and rear bearing bearing still in it i'm gonna put all uh, some new grease in there put some pack some new grease on this bearing and recoat everything with some, you know some grease some new grease before we reassemble it but well anyways guys i hope this video helped you uh give you a little insight on what's in your automatic 4x4 hubs on your Broncos and uh, F-Series trucks. Um, it's really not as complicated as I thought it was gonna be. It's really not much more complicated than uh, say doing a wheel bearing hub on a, a boat trailer or something, just a couple more pieces and parts. Uh, I would highly suggest though, keeping track of this stuff, you know, keeping it on you know a white piece of cardboard like this, keeping it clean. Uh, you could even label the parts like one, you know, two, three, whatever. That way, you know, when you put them back in, just do the reverse order of that and uh, should make for a smooth transition to all your new parts. If you're on the fence about doing this job yourself, I really didn't need that. Any specialty tools, uh, a pair of needle nose, obviously an impact to pull your wheel off, uh, T25 torques, 
uh, screwdriver, hammer, and a chisel that I used to knock those wheel studs out. But I, th I think that's really all we used here. Pretty, everything is pretty simple, basic stuff. So do it yourself, save yourself some money instead of going to that shop and paying them 100, 150 bucks an hour to do this, whatever they're charging nowadays, who knows? But it, it's easy. Um, I was a little intimidated to do it just because I've never messed with four by four hubs before. You know, two wheel drive spindles and stuff, and it's, it's, it's easy. Uh, this really wasn't as complicated as I thought it was gonna be. And uh, I'm gonna go back in the video and probably put the uh, torque specs on the screen for what these nuts are supposed to be torqued to. Um, always go, go and verify yourself though. I could be getting the wrong information, so I'm not gonna act like I know everything, but I'll do my best to find accurate information and put that in the video. So anyways, guys, uh, thanks for checking this vid out. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble all this stuff off camera. I've actually gotta go get some wheel bearing grease cause I'm out, thought I had some left over. So I'm probably gonna be finishing this job up in my time tomorrow. Thanks everybody for watching this video and all the people that always hit that like button and drop a comment. 